Oh shit. Hey, sure. <sighs> Mic seems to be working. Check this out, guys. <laughs> I hope you don't get seizures. <laughs> Holy shit. Let's do this video. What's up, BookTube? My name is Boyman McDudson, and I'm a New York Times best-selling author. No, I'm just kidding. I'm Daniel, and I'm still in the middle of outlining my first novel. Naturally, I wanted to be the best thing in the world, so I have done a fair amount of research so far. Stuff like Brandon Sanderson's lectures, uh, BookTube videos, TV tropes, articles, this surely doesn't make me a writing expert, but hey, I don't need a PhD to have a personal perspective, right? So I present to you five tropes that suck massive ass and I'm never going to use, and you shouldn't too. Trope number one, idiot plot. Okay, here's a question for you. What would you do as a writer if you realized your setting or plot doesn't work even with average IQ characters. I mean, surely you wouldn't just make them dumber, right? <laughs> right? There's so many stories that could not have happened or could have been resolved in like five minutes, but all the characters in them are just unreasonably fucking dumb. Have you watched any YA adaptations in the recent years? Ouch! And what's even more terrifying, most books don't get adapted for the broader audience like that. Which means we are getting creme de la creme, hand-picked strawberries. Shit-stained strawberries, but hey, they are popular, so that must be chocolate. And your nose is lying. Look, we all know art is subjective, and it's all just a matter of approach. But I personally value readers' fascination over frustration. I like smart and resourceful characters that get out of trouble using their skill. Not dumb fucks. I'm sure you can relate. Okay, I was a little bit disingenuous here. Movie makers don't look for the best stuff to make into movies. They look for something that would make them the most money. Long live capitalism. In their minds, we all have shit for brains, and they treat us accordingly. And believe it or not, people gravitate towards fulfilling expectations, good or bad. And this is what we get in the end. Dumb fuck plots for dumb fuck consumers. So I suggest this. My writer friends, it's almost 2020. I think the time has come for us to treat our readers like they actually have functional brains, cause enough is enough. Trope number two, spare the villain. Imagine being a hero in a story with a well done villain. You know this sick fuck will torture and kill every single person you care about just for fun, unless you defeat the bastard. So you go on this epic journey defeat all the henchmen sent to stop you, make friends, lose friends, barely escape death a couple of times, and finally, through blood and sweat, you manage to get to the big bad. You face off and somehow, some way, you win. The big bad is on the floor, begging for mercy. Now, this is where in countless action movies, books, video games, this trope hits the fan. Because nobody in their right mind would spare the life of an evil piece of shit who would gladly put your entire family into the fridge, right? You would take any and all measures to eliminate such a terrible threat. Well, at least I know I would. But guess what our brilliant protagonist does? For some fucking reason, he or she either lets the Betty McBadman go or puts them into a prison cell guarded by the old Mr. Johnson three days away from his retirement. Look, I know death is not the only reliable solution sometimes. For example, with appropriate technology, you could 
irreversibly wipe out the villain's memory and reintegrate them into society. But most of the time, this option is not available. But death is. And if you are the hero who spares the villain just because you don't want to become just like him, well guess what? You have probably just doomed a fuck ton of people to die a terrible death just to protect your fragile ego. And this, my friend, makes you evil. <laughs> Trope number three. Masculine equals competent. Guys, girls, science is a bitch. And sometimes the knowledge it brings us can blow our fucking brains. Yes, I'm talking about that time when we realized women are also people. And they can be as competent as men, or even more. For some reason, I always kind of suspected this. So, as I remember, when the breakthrough happened, I ended up with just a nosebleed and a headache, which was nothing new to me. But a lot of people have actually died. The authorities told us their brains simply couldn't keep up, so they overloaded and fucking exploded. Yeah, terrible, I know. But this is all in the past and now we have to live in this strange new world of female competence. So how is this relevant to writers, Daniel, you overdramatic fuck? Well, when most readers have come to terms with facts and logic, a demand for these so-called strong female characters has been created. But you see, if you are a writer or even an author, it doesn't mean you can't be a dumbass. So a lot of small brain writers have interpreted the demand in a small brain way, either by thinking strong means powerful slash overpowered, which is something everybody and their mom has already dunked on, or by thinking you can just have your women imitate men, and you're done. My dude, just write a man. I hate this uninspired bullshit. See, in reality, competence, bad attitude, coolness, power of will, none of that is inherently masculine or feminine. You don't have to be a tomboy to solve problems and kick ass. Women can be feminine and competent at the same time. Writers, please, just take a look around and stop feeding me this lazy fucking bullshit. Trope number four. Worst case guarantee. Picture this. You are watching an action movie or a book and you are introduced to the villain and his plans. Turns out, this villain has figured out how to become strong as fuck. And unless our heroes stop him, he will become virtually unbeatable and will surely destroy the world. Maybe the villain wants to build a bomb or some shit and our heroes have to secure the components before he gets them. Oh, did I mention it's a time bomb? Look. At this point, I already know the ending and can put the book down or turn off the TV. Because in 9 out of 10 cases, if the worst case scenario has been stated to us, I know it will happen, but our heroes will still save the day by a hair's breadth. Bomb's timer will stop at exactly 0.01 seconds and the unbeatable godlike villain will yield to the power of friendship or whatever else the author pulls out of their ass. Writers, please, please, put effort into your plots. This shit is fucking embarrassing. Trope 5. Insta-love. Believe it or not, I'm a big fan of romance. Maybe not romance as a separate genre, but when it comes to well-written romantic subplots, yes please. To take a step further, I believe that not including romance into your novel is a huge fucking waste, especially in my favorite genre, which is uh, high fantasy. I like a good contrast of misery and fluff, 
and romance is extremely effective at providing good quality fluff. But just like any other element in a story, romance can be done poorly. One of the best ways to ruin your fluffy fluff generator is to utilize insta-love. Because really, if you think about it, insta-love or love at first sight doesn't even exist. There can be attraction or interest at first sight, uh, depending on the intensity, you can even call it a crush. And then there's lust at first sight, which is more related to thirst. But actual love needs quite a bit of time to develop and is more grounded in the feeling of trust, comfort and familiarity, which is why to a lot of us insta-love feels fake and unrelatable. You know, there's a reason why for so long uh, insta-love has been primarily used in children's media. Because writers just thought, eh, whatever, kids are dumb. And the same goes for young adult fiction. Why bother putting effort into your stories if those stupid teenagers are going to eat up whatever horseshit you serve them, right? But this whole practice is predicated on microbrain level thinking. Kids and teens are not dumb. You are, Mr. Writer. And by writing this zero effort garbage for them to read, you are conditioning them to grow into dumb fucks, just like yourself. So let's avoid that, okay? Nice. Alright, these were five tropes that suck balls. Please don't use them. I surely won't. If I ever break this promise, you are allowed to put me down like a rabid dog. I'm pretty sure I haven't said anything too controversial in this video, but you can still call me a pretentious fuck in the comments. Oh, and here's a little tip on how to not do cliffhangers. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, make sure to